We are live. Okay, so I can tell you something shortly about uh, my game. Yep, just go ahead. Uh, what exactly you want analyzed and stuff? So uh, in this game, I was Storm mid and uh, I was against the uh, Klings. Um, and my plan was just to go for the Orchid and uh, playing against Klings uh, from my previous games. I know that it's not a kill lane, it's more that I want to farm. If there's opportunities to kill him, I will give it a try. Uh, but most of the times I'm just farming. Um, I think, in my opinion, I did pretty well. You will see also um, wave cutting and so on in the end. The problem was in the game um, that in the uh, like in the mid and late game, um, we did some bad team decisions, uh, which I didn't want to do. So I, you will maybe watch the game and say that I'm a game ruiner because I was doing uh, creep cutting instead of helping team fights, but uh, the team fights will be very bad. Uh, you will see it later on. Okay, so so one of the main points will be to decide if if you should have been present for the team fights. Yeah, for example, or just watch uh, watch through the game, uh, take a look what you would uh, say about it. Um, you, I don't know if you remember the last session um, of us together was when we did a live coaching, and uh, I told you that I'm not so good at uh, like. Um, listening to your calls and playing by myself so i was um i was suggesting that we take a look at the replay together uh, because that's more uh, relaxed and i can play a bit better i think in this game i was okay like i'm not perfect probably uh, the first 10 minutes like normally may, may, uh, i think you will find some mistakes uh mid game was okay and late game yeah it was a very rough late game for us yeah, okay. Uh, can you tell me about the mistakes that you know that you did? Um, like, uh, the, the, in the end, uh, the enemies, I think Jagger died somewhere solo. And um, my team wanted to defend the t outer tower um, from our base. The uh, hold, hold up just a second. Not, not the what will happen, but... Uh... More like generally, is there any aspect which you think you underperformed, like like uh, last hitting, cutting, farming, something like that, laning? Um, I don't remember. It was a few days ago, or like Saturday, I think. So okay, okay, it doesn't uh, matter. Then. You will see it. You will see my mistakes. I think. Yeah, let's just watch it together then. Yeah. So, first things first, as soon as you see the melee creeps right here being positioned to hit the range creep, that, that's where the timer starts, starts ticking. And you got, gotta get their ASAP to secure it. Like in this case, it's kind of okay because Clinks uh, didn't seem to notice or care. But as you move backwards, if Clinks cared, he would have tried to deny it. I'm not saying he would be successful, but just the fact that you are allowing him to try is already a 50-50 that your last hit will not go through. So as soon as you see these two creeps being positioned to kill the ranged one, you should manually move in for the remnant range to make sure this creep gets last hit without any interruptions. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, that's, that's two hits Klings could have done while you were walking. Yeah, that's true. But he, but he didn't. So, so in the end it worked out. Yeah. Especially if he clicks you, then the creeps aggro. And, and it will mess with your timing. Yeah. But yeah, for now the first wave looks good, you got 4 last hits, that's very nice. I got all, I think. Oh. Yeah, you got all. Yeah, I think that was my first game too, it was a bit messy. 
Now under the tower there is no need for you to manually hit the creeps, your job is to mess with Kling's creeps, either hit him directly or, or try for an eye, because uh, there's there's no point hitting hitting the enemy creeps because eventually they will still push to you and you and you will be able to secure them as they move back or under the tower because you have remnant you have the advantage to secure them. Use this time while Klinks is busy to either mess with his farm or hit him directly. Okay. So uh, what was the first point? Hit him, like hit him directly, or under the tower, Klinks will be busy trying to secure last hits, so you can either try to deny his creeps or hit him directly in the face. Yeah, okay, okay. Hmm? Yeah, as you can see, you can always last hit twelve while running. So so far, it's going very well for you. Yeah, I think the laning was good, like uh, not perfect because I, uh, but uh, farming wise was okay. Did you see a missed action like two seconds ago? Uh, what do you mean? Do, do, uh, do you see something you could have done but you didn't? Ah, um, maybe when the creeps were running to me, maybe stop so it's more on my high ground. Now, that's a little bit of blocking to be done. You always ha have to be open for the opportunities to block some creeps. Like right now, as soon as this creep is done, you can body block, then the the creeps will yeah, end up on your true. high ground, and you will have better advantage. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, and you move past them. So your point is to stand still, so the um, cre um it's more like the range creep will be um at the entrance so the tower doesn't hit it right so the next creep wave will meet uh, more into my direction uh, not standing still simply doing a few seconds of body blocking will make sure the melee creeps will end up on the high ground line which will make it incredibly difficult for clicks to ask it yeah okay But yeah, so far you're winning this lane pretty hard. That's nice. Yeah. I should have denied that. Okay, I got a pull, that's very good. Minimizing the time you spend in the river, that's also very good. This is your cue to use the self while blocking some creeps. Oh, oh, nice, nice. You're good, you're good. Oh shit, <laughs> I hoped it would be enough to um, deny the one. At this point, uh, after using self and the creeps being in sort of a well, mid, how do I say it, neutral position, not your high ground, not his high ground. He has to play in the river. This means you can play a little bit more aggressively and try to do the water combo. Okay. Yeah, probably could have. With uh, Klings, my experience was very bad, like uh, trading-wise, I mostly just lost HP and didn't really gain something. So I think I was very reluctant to do something. <laughs> yeah, he's fairly passive. And did you see the missed action again? I should have blocked, uh, like uh, um, walked around so it's on my high ground. Mm, yes, not blocked, but... I mean, uh, you, did, you, did, you did the, the correct move. Wave. Yeah, you did the correct move. You tracked the, the creeps so they're not being hit by the tower, but you, you forgot to drag them a little bit back so that the incoming creeps would aggro those. And by the time they're finished, the next wave would meet again on your high ground. Yeah, that's true. Like now I should ha I should have come back. Can you still skip? Can, uh, did the stream disconnect for you? It's, 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 it did uh, now it's, yeah, it's a really weird. Like, um, I, I can see it. If you can you click play? 
I did. Yeah, it works. It's okay. just a poor quality. Yeah, it disconnected for no reason. Uh, oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is something what I didn't want to do. Like what I wanted to do is actually just connect the next wave so it's on my high ground. But you see uh, the creeps are meeting in the river. Yeah. No, mistake. Well, as long as you can spot them yourself, it's fine. Yeah. So should be aware what of... I thought about... Yeah. What I thought about was uh, what you are doing sometimes to drag it to the neutral camp, but then I realized that my next wave is already in. So yeah, I fucked up. Yeah, before tracking, you gotta make sure the waves are always moving. Uh. I think why I'm doing so much um, auto attacking now is because of the room time. Um, I'm, I cannot see the resolutions a bit bad. Uh, I think it's th 320 or something right now. Yeah, 327. Yeah, that's why I'm pushing a bit to get the rune soon. Okay, uh, one thing about the laning is that so far we have a lot of advantageous positions where you know clinks will try to go for the range creep or just in general moments where clinks is sitting on the low ground. So that there has been at least four, I think, three, four or five cases where we could have simply walked up to him and did a Vortex combo. Okay. So that's missed aggression. Yeah. You, you don't want Vortex combo when there is problems with vision or the enemy is safely on his high ground or there's a move speed difference or the creep difference. But right now, it's been a lot of times where Clems is just sitting there alone. Like, like right now, at this moment, he's moving, he's preparing to get this range creep. That's your cue to move down the river. Vortex, get behind him, do remnant, block him, block him, block him, do a remnant, and that's that's more than half of his HP gone. Like right now as well. Uh, can so you see those? Yeah, can you recognize those moments? Yeah, I can, I can, I can. It's okay. just. I didn't see them while playing, actually, but you're right. This was kind of a bad time to go and place that ward. Ideally, you should have continued to walk with the creeps to have a great health pool. Just continue to walk with the creeps and then make sure to nuke this wave ASAP. It is unlikely Clinks will do significant damage. He doesn't have that damage yet. You have high HP. So as the rune time approaches, your goal is to make sure the wave is coming under Clinks' tower. Yeah. What time is it now? It's four o'clock in me right now. Right now it's four. Okay, so I should be at the room. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if Clinks, if you, if you, if Clinks would see the room on the top, he would realistically deny it from you. But it's at the bottom, so so that's better. Again, it it worked out, but uh, we're discussing risks that shouldn't be taken in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I should have pushed the wave and then go for a rune. Yeah. yeah. You can see how you leveled Vortex at, at 3 and have it used a single time. Yep, yep. Also, with the Arcane Rune, you could have waited until level 6 to pop it and use it. This would realistically give you, get you a kill on the clinks. Yep. 
Yeah, that's true. Um, sometimes I'm like, I know that at four minutes, if I get the room, um, I can use the, what I'm th sometimes doing is just uh, use the uh, um, rune and the mana and uh, HP to farm. Uh, yeah, and then get the next rune or play aggressive, depends on. But yeah, I was maybe really too passive to play versus him. Yeah, yeah. What you're saying makes sense. So you're already thinking in the right direction. Okay, yeah, I was about to comment that self might not be necessarily resolved. All a part of the few smaller mistakes. The laning, I think, went really good. I think so. Like, that's also what I remember. Like, laning was not great, but mostly I just farmed. Uh, I got the okay sh orchid timing, I think, and uh, after that I did like good plays. You, I think you, you will see it. I don't remember so much about uh, like the game in detail, but I know it was I, I wasn't so bad. Okay, let's let's confirm. Let's skip forward a bit. Can you comment on your decisions about the item build? Not, not the item build, the skill build. The skill build? Uh, yeah. Um, I think in the, like now, in the hindsight, I should have, uh, like, um, not maxed the passive because I'm mostly farming anyway, so I didn't want, really want to trade. So I should have level two, uh, at least level two, because I also stack the jungle right now, as you can see, and then, uh, I should, I wanted to farm anyways. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you want here, right? Yeah. Cause he leveled up all this passive. For, two, yeah. two, for a kill lane and haven't been attempting any kills. Uh, like, um, I was lo actually losing a lot of games with Storm, um, and I was, uh, I had a really good win rate with him in a, like uh, last year, uh, 2018 and 19. Um, then I didn't play him so much anymore. Uh, I was wondering what, why I played so much better in the past. I think I, uh, remember what i always did in the past was actually going for the bloodstone first item not orchid and mostly farmed and then got the um, orchid and somehow that was m more my style or it fit better to me i don't know oh, well in that case you can always try to replicate that style and see if it works for you yeah Hello, life stealer. Yeah, I was a bit confused by his Mati. I think it was level four and I was level eight or something, right? I cannot see it so clearly because of the resolution. Yeah, you're level nine at the moment. Oh. And the Kling seems to be hunting you. Yeah, I decided not to trade because uh, of strafe. He, uh, I, I will miss a text. Ideally, you would run close to full mana, get out of Klinx's range until the strength disappears, and then re-engage him. But that will require okay. it to have full mana. Yeah, so so, have so it, it is kind of risky, because then, usually when you're farming Orchid, you, you wouldn't be running full mana. Uh, but yeah, in, in case you were running full mana or had a good rune, in that case your play would be to juke out Klinx's uh, evasion and then kill him. Yeah. This would also work if you if you would decide to play a kill lane and just carry a few mangoes to kill him. Yeah. 
I think one of the problems I have with Storm is somehow you he's very of course he's very mana dependent. And if I want to farm, I'm using the mana and uh, mana, I mean, and um, if my teammates are getting uh, dove, sometimes I, I'm missing mana to help out. A very simple solution and something I haven't seen you practice religiously is sending a clarity with every single purchase. Yeah, um, I'm right now I didn't do it, but you will see it in the mid game. I'm sending clarities. Okay. Usually what I do is throughout the early game to mid game, I will always, always have a clarity in my inventory. Yeah, me too. You will see it, even in okay. this game. Uh, you got, you saw my decisions, right? Um, I saw that uh, probably not very helpful to uh, have other lanes, but I recognize I could kill the mid tower and it's uh, very good to kill the mid tower. Absolutely. Your goal, your goal is to Number one goal is to get a fast orchid. Number two goal is to secure the enemy mid tower. And number three goal is to help cancel enemy dives. Yep. Yeah, I saw he um, they were pushing the lane and um, the tower, and that's why I went back. Yeah, I can see the top lane has lost a tower, so naturally they will congregate in the middle now that's why i was standing a bit um, more well, what i just okay ah yeah i remember <laughs> there was something very funny in real life uh when i just and paused because there was a beetle uh, there was an animal at my desk a really huge um, insect and i was very disgusted and <laughs> i instantly paused and um uh, <laughs> removed it Moved it or removed it? Removed it. Okay. Is the beetle okay? I think not. Oh. Okay. I was very terrified and confused. <laughs> my my condolences for the beetle and your sanity. Yeah. Okay, now I think I'm I'm not even sure if I'm dying here. What? I don't think you're dying. No. Shouldn't be. There were a few a little bit unnecessary saves though. Yeah, a bit scared at that moment. I mean, in, in that case, either you zip and teleport, or do shorter zips just to just enough to get out of range. Because at this stage of the game, there's no one that can actually catch you. Yeah, that's true. I think, do I have my Orchid now? I, I, I'm not you have sure. it purchased, not delivered. Okay, yeah, maybe I want to farm it and then go to base or something, I don't... And this is the first case of being a little bit inefficient. Oh, no, no, no. Um, I just saw it. I was missing gold. I didn't have gold for my quarter staff. That's why I was Oh, okay, okay. You I are excused. Yeah. The, yeah, you uh, are you yeah. are excused then. Yeah. Now I should have zero gold and the orchid. Yeah. For the... Yep. Okay, yeah. so walk walk me through your thought process. Now that you have orchid, what do you do? I think I I was doing actually a pretty lot like, like I was um trying to uh, gang um or find solo targets. Um I'm not sure what will happen in the next minutes, but I, I definitely got some kills and um, yeah, I could um, proceed to snowball a bit. I mean, not what you did in this particular moment, which you remember don't. Imagine this is a fresh game and you just got your orchid. What is your next move? Um, my next move would be, because mid tower is down, um, to I, do, I, I cannot see it in the, clearly in the minimap. If the bot tower of the enemies are still standing... Um, All I'll, of the other towers are up. I, I'll probably try to go bottom and try to kill the carry or other people there and um, tell my team to push the bottom tower and uh, like play on their side of the mat, map in the jungle and bottom. That makes sense. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Not I mean, your, 
the part where your team should play on the other side is is that exactly needed or correct ideally for the outer towers you will want your team behind you because now that the mid tower is gone they will do their best to protect and storm and fresh orchid is still extremely squishy and he, he doesn't want to do team fights he wants isolated targets so if he is forced to do team fights like if he's knocking down towers then he will want his team behind himself if that makes sense yeah definitely uh, we'll, we'll see how it works out i don't remember what i did <laughs> Oh, one more to tip on the efficiency. As soon as you finish the teleport, just do a short zip around 2,000 units or something while keeping the bottle up. This, this way you will travel some distance and still keep the full man and full bottle. Do not land yeah. straight on the tower and do end and walk. Oh shit, I think I killed myself. The Blade Man. Don't yeah. Think. That was stupid. There was one stupid death, I think it was that. I didn't uh, check this um, Blade Man and I kept hit hitting him. Yeah, let's watch this again. Uh, it was really bad. No, yeah. Yeah, I think it's just bad luck because he placed the tombstone exactly half a millisecond before we silenced him. And then oh, the yeah. blade mail, yeah, which you kept hitting. Okay, we'll we'll put this under the accidental death, nothing to talk about. That was bad. I would say, looking at the bigger picture, your team should have, or, or yourself, should have had more information where everyone is. And of course, information on everyone's items, because blade mail is really an orchid killer. You will not, you will want to be extremely careful jumping targets with blade mail. Yep. So, so in hindsight, uh, you shouldn't jump the first target, you gotta do some preparation first. I, I didn't expect it, I think, uh, because at the timing of Blade Man. Well, it, it is pretty cheap. Mm. It seems like you're... Damn, he is fat. He's undying, he's fat. Yeah, I think he was the offlaner who won, right? Against Jagger and Crystal Maiden. Oh, that makes sense then. I thought he was a support. Mm, no, I think he was the offlaner. I think th this guy will die in a few seconds. Which guy? Like the the uh, life stealer. Oh. We'll see it. I don't remember. I, I know that someone is dying. I'm not sure which one. Okay, the witch joker. Ah, true. I remember that now. Uh, what I saw from the game was that the dangerous ones are witch doctor and Lina. Uh, because they have disables against me, the Undying cannot kill me, Lifesteal cannot kill me, and Kings can kill me when he has Orchid or something. Yeah, that makes sense. But in the end, if your hunting supports with your Orchid potential, is that really worth it for you? Um, you mean if it was worth it for me to kill the Witch Doctor? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you have a choice here to go for the life stealer or go for the witch doctor. Yeah, um, so I can explain, like, uh, as you said, these two um, kills would be possible. Uh, what I uh, thought was I cannot kill life stealer without Orchid, and I cannot uh, kill him with having witch doctor around if he, um, for example, stuns me, or if I evade it, of course. Um, and I, uh, because I need to decide quickly, I decided to um, disable the uh, witch doctor and kill him. And um, 
then maybe with the help of other skill lifestealer. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But in the end, what I want to talk about is the is this skill on Witch Doctor. Does it enable your team to actually go down and push that tower? Um, not so much, I would say. Yeah. In that case, I I would advise taking a little bit bigger risks, because if if you break it down a little bit further, CM is unlikely to hug you in the melee range to make Witch Doctor's stun an inconvenience. She would stand from afar, she would maybe cast an ultimate, maybe cast Q, maybe cast Root. So I would say if you would silence the Lifestealer with CM's help with your Vortex, Witch Doctor isn't gonna have enough time to deal any significant damage to you. And I'm fairly certain that Lifestealer would die. And which doctor would run away because he wouldn't have any mana. But that's the, that's the point of the trade. The more important target dies when which doctor runs away. He cannot defend the tower. So by se select selective targeting, we gotta think about which kill would enable our next move. I think I shouldn't have sit there. I think it's okay. Really? In, the, I... in the end, the job was done. I mean, sure, sure. No one there is set to save you, and you end dying is showing in the middle. So, so yeah, it's fine both ways. In the heat of the battle, you're not gonna you're not gonna know where everyone is. You wouldn't have time to check. So, securing more dangerous targets is usually fine. Yeah. And you can see it right now, right? Uh, the clarity, which I talked about? Yeah. Okay, it's really good that you got that kill on the clans because that actually did enable you to push the tower. Yeah. Ah, I think now I didn't. I decided not to jump him because of this uh, blade mail thing. Yeah, makes sense. The blade mail thing, but more importantly, that you don't know where everyone else is. Yep. If you jump, if you bust your orchid, you're susceptible to which doctor stun, which can become out into Lina stun, and since you have no vision, you cannot take such risks. Yep. Uh, did you saw? I put a ward, but it uh, unfortunately got the wall of the um, undying. At this, there was a sentry actually. Yeah. Uh, I gotta be really selective about where you want those wards. Yeah, I wanted to ha uh, have it in the enemy jungle somewhere, and that was the easiest I could go. Oh, now I think he will die. Yeah, I think Jagger shouldn't have ultied. That was 100% safe kill. Yeah. Yeah. I also went back because I wanted uh, to let Jagger the farm. Well, I gotta say, so far, most of the moves made sense. Yeah. Um, you see my item queued, right? It's huge uh, because I checked the King's item somewhere before and saw that um, he went for all heat. I'm not sure if he already has it, but uh, he's definitely going for it. Well, against Klings, it would make sense to rush Yules regardless of his itemization, because casting Yules on him dispels his uh, evasion. Uh, oh, uh, if I cast Yules on uh, Klings, it, um, this, um, it makes his strafe goes away? The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Now we do. Very nice. Uh, do you know if I you, um, use Yutes on Ember, if it uh, pops, if it also removes his Flame Guard? I don't remember. Absolutely does. That's right, yeah. It's a dispel. It's a regular dispel. No. I think you could have jumped here. 
Yeah, I don't remember why I didn't. Clinks does have Orchid, but I think he used it to kill the CM. So yeah, Life Stealer is a pretty free kill. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. yeah. That's another thing you gotta train as a Storm to, to have a trigger finger and be ready to jump at a moment's notice. Yeah, no, now I think I will jump him, yeah. It's late, if it does. No, it, it, it looked okay. Got a kill, that's very nice. So far, everything makes sense about their gameplay. Thanks, I, I'm me. Actually, I'm not a bad player. I mean, in the end, uh, what I wanted to discuss with you is more the late, late game. Like, right, um, because there will be some very tough, tough decisions for me to make. And I'm actually losing games because uh, I t ex I know how to deal with these situations. Um, I'm telling my teammates what to do, but they don't listen. And I know it's always sounds very stupid uh, to say, hey, my teammates are um, at mistake, but it was really game losing. And I, 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 knew, I didn't want to do what they wanted to do. Yeah, that makes sense. You will see so, yeah. it. You will see it. And I think maybe you would have decided the same way as me. I guess we can skip a bit through the mid game. Um, yeah, you can um, make it a bit faster, maybe. The, yeah. If you see mistakes, point it out. Um, I think right now it's more or less mostly farming, finding targets to kill, um, doing storm things. Uh, I didn't. I realized I didn't have mana. That's why. No, you had enough. Uh, the thing is with the. Illusion rune, that's the only rune you can bust immediately to regain mana. Especially when you're walking in the mid game looking for pickups. You can't afford to have no mana. So, ideally, in this situation, you see everyone in the middle, is, you know that Lifestealer is alone, he is broke, he has nothing. In, no. During the next 5 seconds or so, as he's walking to this wave, you frantically immediately start start abusing that battle violating that battle sips and getting your mana full yeah and then immediately jumping him and killing him yeah uh one question for you um the illusion rune are you aware that if you have it in the bottle and use it you it's like a mantra that it um breaks silences and so on you know that right yeah it doesn't it does the spell yeah yeah it's one thing I learned some weeks ago, and uh, it's really helpful. It is, but in this case, it shouldn't apply to you as you have mules for that job. Yeah, yeah. So you can definitely sacrifice the dispel factor for some mana. Yeah, yeah was a misplay. Oh, missed Vortex. <laughs> Shit. Well, okay, that's a missed opportunity, nothing too serious. Yeah, my, I sent um, dust and um, clarity because I realized I didn't have enough mana. Oh, nice escape. Yeah, it was. I <laughs> almost died there. Uh, I got a bit um, caught off guard uh, because of clings, yeah, and um, Lifesteal was also there. I did, as you can see, two zips, uh, the second one to TP out, and I also yep. used the to or hit. Yeah. That still was the correct play in the first place, because you have you have the heals, you know that the only way they're killing you is if they stack disables on top of you, so for solo clings, you have heals, you can always escape. So pushing the dangerous areas is kind of your job right now. So in the end, what you did was correct. What I like to do is, uh, because I, of course, also <laughs> watch um, BSJ's stream, um, you, he talks a lot about the deadline concept. And 
uh, that at least one person um, should take the aggressive and dangerous farm and uh, push the uh, enemy safe lane. Um, that's actually the spot I like to be most, uh, especially with Storm or some other heroes like Void Spirit who um, have some kind of escape. Yeah, that makes sense. You are having the correct dot process there. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, you saw it, right? Uh, when Lifesteal and Clinks, uh, they both are the, I would say, the strongest enemies uh, were trying to kill me. And uh, during that, uh, my team could fight the other supports and so on in the mid. And I think they won the fight. Yeah, just one thing I'm confused about is why the entire rest of your team is hanging out in the middle when there's nothing to defend and nothing to offend. That uh, freaks me I, out. I have no idea. Like, um, uh, yeah, I actually, um, well, I should be more like controlling, uh, making calls and so on. I got a bit lazy, um, so I just let them, them play. Sometimes they even uh, don't even listen. Uh, and I do more my thing, but you're right. Uh, actually, we should have smoked uh, and be more together and try to kill or get towers at the bottom, like more pressure at their side. Yeah, exactly. The thing about Dota's philosophy, the behavior patterns is that players are willing to listen to whoever is kind of the strongest on the team. So you as a mid laner, as a storm, you actually have a pretty good chance to always be listened to and make the good calls. That's true. Um, yeah, sometimes I do it. Um, I think during mid game now, I didn't do so much. Uh, like uh, in terms of calling. So far, one problem I'm noticing is that every single time a fight breaks out, either the team is not with you, or you're not with the team. Like right now, a minute ago, you tried to solo kill and the witch flag that you kind of missed and then head back, and that's fine. But then the next thing your team does is as you're leaving this area after an unsuccessful gank, they decide they want to play there. And again, it doesn't make much sense. So I, I would say in those situations where you can cooperate with your team, just try to hang around the dangerous areas, kind of be there. And your team will be naturally inclined to play around you, yeah, yeah. because they will feel safer when you're when you're there because you're you're, you're so strong, uh, and they might see like you're there. We can push the tower. We we, sh we should play around this area. But if if you head back to push the other lanes, they will get confused. They will not understand what the plan should be. So as long as you have a clear understanding of your goals of of enemies' power stacks and positioning, you should lead your team like. If you can't lead your team directly, you can always lead your team simply by example, by by playing in those lanes you know you want to play. True. Like, now watching it with you, I also realized why uh, I was wondering why I didn't stay uh, with them. Um, I think during that time was uh, I saw the top, um, top lane is being pushed and I saw the um, respawn timer that clings and uh, um, Lifesteal are up, are up soon uh, and only Witch Doctor being dead and I also thought that we won't get the tower fast enough so uh, that's why I headed back. Maybe I should have just stayed in the area. That's what you are suggesting, right? Yeah. Usually if, if the creep wave moves a little bit too far, that's where we send one of your weakest supports to do the deep ocean because you as a strongest player will need to sit nearby in case the fight breaks out but if the if the weakest player is missing what that essentially does it it will make sure your team is either unable to fight or they, they decide to fight and they lose the fight which is kind of what happened there at the tower yeah. how much gold do i have uh, almost 2,000 or 1,200? 1.2. Okay. We can also try to talk about the like right now with, with the Orchid, 
there hasn't usually been that much action with the Orchids. So if we look back at the match, you've made like two, maybe three kills, and then the rest of your gameplay was simply split, split pushing. So to to fix this, I wouldn't say problem. I would say small gameplay adjustment, you either would want to make sure, again like I said, you play with the team, or make the team play with you, or if you want to embrace the split pushing route, like you gotta have this mindset from the beginning, from the laning, like you will know that from the draft, the enemy team will want to maybe walk together or maybe play passively, or your team maybe want to play passively, be like more on the defensive position, just play more in the jungle. And in that case, Orchid becomes less valuable and Bloodstone becomes more valuable. Like in this match, from the last 15 minutes, what we have seen is Orchid has not been a big contributor to the gameplay, whereas the Bloodstone would have allowed whatever you were doing for these past 15 minutes to do it better. Now, what you said, uh, before you even said Bloodstone, I um, realized you wanted to say blood, uh, Bloodstone. And uh, maybe now seeing how I play, because it's very similar how I play, um, I, I go for kills which are uh, like um, possible. But I'm also aware that the people are more clumped if I, they know I have Orchid and can kill them. Um, and then I don't really like to go in uh, especially if I don't see some somebody on the map, um, and that's what what you mean. I you you saw I didn't have so many chances to use the uh, orchid. Um, besides that, right? Besides besides yeah. ones I took, and that's also the point I think why I won a lot more games in the past uh, with Storm because I went Bloodstorm most of the cases, and uh, it fits more my playstyle. <laughs> yeah, in that case, you should absolutely try out the. Bloodstone more often, but in the end, you, you will need to train yourself to recognize the scenarios where you think one itemization would beat the other. Yeah, yeah. or I should uh, make my team play me with me or the other thing. Like um, when I'm playing alone, uh, like what you don't I, don't, I don't know if you can see it, if you click the um, player score, uh, player board, um, the stats. Um, the the yeah the um, the board with the stats no no um uh, the one where you can see um the how many kills everybody has uh, you cannot see it I actually when I play solo um I mute everybody <laughs> that's also um because I don't want to get dis distracted um and yeah th that's also why <laughs> of course the communication is a bit different then yeah okay. I mean, what you're saying is if, you, if you're less inclined to try to communicate rather than the team, then yeah, Bloodstone is, again, it works in that direction as that. You don't need to have as much coordination to perform those skills. You can be more of a, instead of actor, you can be more of a reactor, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, now you will see a uh, re pretty clean kill on Lina, I think. Uh, yeah. You will see it. As soon as she wastes her stun, there's no longer a need to do big zips. So yeah, true. The, the kill was really good, but the final big zip was kind of unnecessary. So just something for the future. Uh, uh. It would have saved like 200 men or something. Yeah. Other than that, yeah, pretty standard pick off. Mm, I think you can fast forward a bit, uh, like um, the speed a bit higher. Yeah, maybe not so high, I don't know, uh, this is like four, maybe two or something. Oh, shit, I died. I didn't bother where I was the, the ping. Hmm. Uh, 
uh, and again you went on the support when there was a chance to go on the live stealer. Ideally, uh, you could have you could have used the ghouls to disable Lena if you were afraid of her stun. But even more ideally, before you jumped, you would have watched her and have seen if she has used her stun stun on the crystal maiden. And yeah, makes sense. There you go. Just as you're finishing the teleport, she has her stun wasted. Yeah, yeah. Should have gone on. Yeah, life then stealer. As, as a jump, life stealer is dead. Lina can't do shit. Correct targeting, much more impact. Yeah, that's true. It's a good point. I didn't see it right from player perspective. Did I watch the fight? Which fight? This one. Uh, like from my player perspective, did I see the fight? So did I? Could I see that Lina wasted the stun? If I'm seeing you, I think you're seeing it. Let's let's confirm. Yep, you absolutely saw it. Yeah, shit. My mistake. I I think I was so, so focused on killing <laughs> Lina. Uh, that yeah, I should have jumped on live stream. That's quick. Yeah, it's something very common for the star players is that they choose the easiest kills over the correct kills. So from focusing, you would always focus the carry or the mid, like the the stronger um, people, uh, the stronger heroes, in case it's possible, right? Uh, Again, the answer is it depends. Usually, you want to focus their win condition in the fights. So, let's say they have a really nasty ultimate like a Winter Wyvern, Oracle, Void, uh, Chrono. In that case, you will want to always focus their win condition ultimate heroes. But in, in this match, uh, nothing here really threatens you apart from clinks so you can be much more selective about your targets and in this case you focus those which would grant your team the most space naturally shutting down enemy carry will do that or the mid yeah. I think this this problem will be your biggest contributing factor to a loss because so far the last few fights you keep focusing the supports. No. Yeah. Now you have wasted your entire mana pool just to kill Lina now you cannot fight as good as you would. Yeah, I think the f thought process is that uh, I wanted to take them out because they are the ones with disable or can um, really kill me or um, like um, prevent, prevent me from doing what I can do. Um, and then I uh, wanted to kill the, the others. The problem is that the others in this particular draft have really easy time running away from, from your team. If your team had many catches, uh, like a spread breaker and stuff, in that case, yeah, you can be much more lenient. You will have much more leeway with the targets you can choose. 
But when it is so easy for them to disengage, you will want... Like I said, they don't have that many disables to that threaten you, you will want the kills that make the most space. Yeah. Or you would have tried to kill here Kings or Lifestealer. Yeah. yeah. With the Yules, you have very much a lot of control over the fights. Oh, what's up? Shiva's guard. What's up with that? What's what's why did you buy that? Um, I think I wanted to in case I got caught, I wanted to be able to survive. Uh due to the armor. And um I wanted to have a mana item. Um yeah. Maybe in the hindsight hex would have been better. There are very, very few scenarios where I would actually advise buying Shivas because uh, let's let's break it down. In this game, if you get locked down, you will die regardless of Shivas or not because Klings Klings simply deals way too much damage. So if if they stack the stuns, if Lena and the Witch Doctor stack their stuns on you, you're dead regardless. So yeah, either the best. The best item right now is BKB. Second best would be Chu. Okay, let's. Uh, I'm not gonna say just item name, I'm gonna explain why BKB is the best here because it will allow you to shake off any stunts and be extremely selective about your targets because you will not have to worry about stunts anymore, which means you can always entirely focus just there. Uh, Playing so just a life stealer. Now, yep. second item as a as a hex would increase your pickoff potential so much better, which means you can now jump solo clings, sip with orchid, do the vortex, then hex him. Most likely he will die. Third best item serves the same purpose, increases your pickoff potential. That would be bloodthorn. That's more, more of a team fight item to allow your team to help focus it down. And and yeah, those three items they do serve very specific purpose. And and Shiva's guard, if you break it down, it doesn't really help you survive. Survive anything else that simply you'll sink and simply away wouldn't. And it doesn't help you offensively at all. Right. Should have gone BKB probably, and then uh, jump on Klings or Lifesteal. Yeah. Uh, to from like from what you see now, right now, like to now, you would probably assume that I win the game, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's also what I assumed at this stage. Okay. See, 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 you got caught and she was did nothing. Well, well, BKB would have let you live. Yeah. The bot Rex is still standing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Only one lane. Uh, they got eagles. Mm. I, I think soon it will happen. Ah, uh, now, um, like what I tell my team right now is they have eagles. I don't want to fight against them. Let's just be careful not to die solo um, and split, split push. Or I will split push and uh, you try not to die. I think what will happen soon is that Jagger dies and the other three t try to death the mid tower, the one uh, out outer tower in the middle, which is standing. Um, and I tell them, hey, I, I will cut the lanes uh, so they cannot push. And you please don't fight. And they just did the total opposite. I, was, I would say, despite them having the ages, your team 
should still win those team fights because with, with the Jaggers ultimate, he he should be able to easily get his ult off every time and deal damage with it every time, which means deleting a hero or two every time. And with you buying BKB, again, you are untouchable, clicks cannot kill you, lifestealer cannot kill you, you can absolutely win those fights. The biggest mistake right now is not having BKB. That's true. Yeah, I, I can see it uh, right now during the <laughs> during the game. Uh, I didn't. So, like your 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 question at the start of the game is whether you should have attended those team fights or whether your team should have attended those team fights. I think for now the answer is your team is able to win those fights. But you gotta have the right itemization to help win those fights. Yeah. So assuming I have PKB right now and the enemy have Aegis, uh, Aegis and the game state would be right now, you would still have told them, hey, let's smoke and fight them? Or like despite the Aegis? Or would you maybe be, because I'm a more, uh, I'm still a bit more inclined to be more careful. Um, in case they have Aegis, I really often, let's let's say even if I, be, I have BKB, I would tell them, uh, let's just wait out the five minutes um, till Aegis is gone and then we can do, uh, like, um, go against them. The thing is, is that with the Aegis, they are, the enemy team will be playing aggressively. Because with the Aegis, they have advantage. So in that case, what you should be doing as a team is wait for your own advantage in which case it's the night time for the night starter and the cooldown being ready for the chug or not so to answer a question yes and no while they have ages they will want to play aggressively but until you can leverage that advantage until there is night time until chugger has ult you play carefully you split push as soon as there is night time as soon as chugger has ult and, and if you have BKB, just go ahead, do the fight, you should be okay. Yeah, makes sense. Maybe we could also play on their uh, side at least when we do it, so they have a longer way to go to our base. Yeah. Push the wave before. That is the correct play usually, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you okay. got you gotta force every five GP on the enemy zone so that if in case you lose that fight, they will waste as much time as possible getting to your high ground. What you see right now is what I told you uh, in the beginning. I realized uh, many are dead. Um, yeah, and I, n now um, I'm going in the middle. Actually, I see they want to push. Uh, I look at the timing. It's uh, around 30 seconds, and I wanted to kill the creep wave. Uh, Lina is pinging, supports are coming in, the others are coming back from the middle, and I TP out. And if you open the... Um, because I was watching the replay after that, uh, they are heading back from the mid and try to run towards me from the middle. Yeah, you, you absolutely did the correct play, given the scenario. Yeah. I told the night stalker, right now I'm telling my, I remember I told my night stalker, please go back, they are running towards you, don't die and don't fight because I see them still, uh, like my team um, is close to the enemy mid tower, uh, our enemy, uh, our tower, and um, I see them teleporting now and I tell my team, hey, they will push the tower, Jaga is dead, we cannot fight them and I don't want to fight there. What happens is they take the fight. Uh, three versus five. Night Stalker dies. Bybex goes in, and yeah, they all die. I I didn't want to be there because I didn't really see us winning the fight without Jagger. Yeah. So what I what I can say is, uh, given this situation, everything you're doing is correct. But my point was that this situation shouldn't have existed in the first place and you had the power to make it so. Yeah, that's correct. 
like from what we have talked um, previously, I, um, we should have done it differently. I, I, I didn't know at this time. Yeah, my, my job here is to give you alter, alternative options to go about the game. Yeah. To point out things you haven't been noticing before. Yeah, I think biggest mistake uh, for me is not going for BKB. Um, yeah. Yeah, that certainly would have changed how they approach their aggression. If they now storm has BKB, they will be much more selective about their engagement. But okay. since they know your only offensive tool is Orchid, and at this, at this stage they will have Ulysses, Glimmer Capes and everything else, you are not as much of a threat as you could be. Uh, one question, like, let's assume I have PKB. Uh, I still need Dust because of the Glimmer Capes. Uh, they have it. Um, would you drop the youths for the BKB or uh, and I mean BKB and dust? Um, before the fight, simplest thing would you to pocket the battle and pocket the boots. Uh, what did you say with the bottle? I didn't hear it. Pocket, place it in the backpack. Okay, the bottle in the backpack. Bottle and the boots. Then you have space for BKB and the dust. As soon as you okay. use the dust, swap the bottle. Uh, swap the threads back. Okay. Will there be more to break down? Or have we reached the peak of what we can analyze from this game? Um, I think we have reached a peak. Like from now on, there was just uh, like um, picks, pick offs by the enemy, and then we. I think I I didn't even right now I cannot see how many um, times I died. I think I died twice or once or three times or something. Not not too many. Yeah, it's three times for you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what I can take away from the analysis is that I should have um, be better selecting the targets in in the team fights or in the fights. Uh, I should have gone BKB. Um, yeah, and that we from that on we could have maybe taken the team fight uh, at night time with Night Soccer and Jagger Uti up, even if they had this. Yeah, with the correct optimization, I, I believe your draft is superior. Could be. So, um, in most of the cases, you would go for the um, BKB after Orchid and Blood, Bloodstone, right? Yeah. Even if the draft doesn't call for it, you know the enemy will eventually try to itemize against you anyway. So like there's a nullifier, which we have seen in this replay. BKB would help from that. There's there's a Bissell. If, if they cast a Bissell, you're most likely dead. But if they cast a Bissell while you are under BKB, they simply wouldn't have enough damage to kill you through a Bissell. So BKB is not just to save spawn to save from spells, it can be usually lets us survive much better. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I usually buy it also on other heroes, but with Storm, I'm like more, I need mana and he, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, should have bought PKB. Yeah, unless there is some scary spells that go through BKB, like the Black Hole or Chrono, or single target scary spells like like, like Doom or, Berser or, or the Beastmaster's Ultimate. In that case, Lincolns can be a good substitute, but ideally you would have both. Yeah, correct. Uh, I try. I try to salvage the situation. I think just by um, cutting some ways, but I realized at this point it's really tough. Um, maybe you can watch this scene here because um, I have a camera. I think what I try to do is just destroying the wave or zipping in and out. Sometimes I'm not so sure about. Yeah, it's, if it's correct. Oh, you just killed two guys, looks okay. No. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you would say the I'm. it was not so terrible claims by me, just the, these small things which add up, right? Yeah, it's, it's always the small things that accumulate. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, if you have no further questions, I think we'll end the session here. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right then, see ya. Yeah, thanks so much.